First off, Happy Easter to you all. As promised, this week's video tip will focus on full contact, soft hands, way to you training. Obviously, it is advisable that you have a partner in order to derive the most benefit from this instruction. However, much of the input is cerebral and being able to understand what the program is all about and visualizing the action described in this clip, you should be able to derive an insight and even a possible expertise in this aspect of Wei Chi Ru training. Those of you who must train alone, work on a heavy bag or the training dummy we call Bob as your partner. March and April have been extremely busy months for me. I've been working on the Black Belt Test Guide, preparing for seminars conducted during my week-long visit to New Hampshire, and answering hundreds of email that come in every month from IUK of members throughout the world. I'm finally catching up on everything and hope to be busy for the rest of April meeting and critiquing my virtual dojo students in our conference room sessions. So get with it. Okay, let's get into lesson one of full contact, soft hands fighting. Alright, good morning all. Uh, this film is uh, going to be sent out to my virtual dojo students and to all of the IUKF members. And uh, there's also going to be a kind of a, a dialogue that you probably already listened to uh, that's going to be included with this film. And that's going to be sent out exclusively to my entire mailing list. It has a lot to do with uh, the developments within IUKF and also sort of a a uh, summary of developments within Wei Chiru over the past 50, 60 years. Uh, things that have happened uh, that have, has affected the growth of Wei Chiru and the reputation that our style suffers from uh, and in large measure because of the seniors, the senior, senior, seniors, those people who are my age and somewhat younger who uh, sort of are responsible for developing the reputation that Wei Chi Ru now enjoys or suffers from, depending on your perspective. Anyway, uh, today I'm going to be talking about what I call full contact soft hands fighting. And uh, I, I deliberately chose the term full contact because it has the, 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 uh, the feeling of uh, UFC, uh, mixed martial arts, uh, the, the flavor of the day styles uh, that are uh, taking over the, the, uh, the world regarding uh, uh, the martial arts. And it's sort of pushing Wei Chi Ru and the other traditional arts off to the side and relegating them to the, uh, the, the job or the chore or the destination of teaching children how to be good in school and uh, you know it, which is nothing wrong with that but it, it's a far cry from what the martial arts was all about 60 70 years ago okay when it enjoyed the same reputation as now as, as taken over by the, the ultimate fighting uh, uh, groups and I, what I, I'm trying to do with this series of full contact traditional martial arts fighting is to sort of bring back the, the feeling that uh, traditional martial arts can also be used for self-defense. That, that, that was its intent originally. And we've gone a long ways from that, mainly because of our audience. I mean, we work with people who have day jobs or they work for a living and they must use their hands and they, they must be able to show up for work and they can't afford to be laid up for a month with a broken leg or uh, cracked ribs or busted face or hands that are all mangled uh, and therefore the martial arts, the traditional martial arts in general has taken on a more uh, safe kind of a reputation 
and uh, it, it's one where uh, you know there's nothing wrong with that. But the further we go away from the original intent of the martial arts, the less effective is our training, and our training becomes more and more safe and in the process less and less effective. All right, when we get away from uh, the stress, the scenarios, and, and the actual training where uh, you can even fight in a competitive mode. Uh, and, I, and I think a lot of, in large measure this is due to the way we train and the attitude we have when we train our students. Uh, most of our fighting or in a dojo comes about with what I call cooperative drills, where we know what's going to happen, and even then, everything gets pulled, and you never get hit. And the people we work with have this fear of getting hit and hitting. And this is a big stumbling block. Now, if, if you're an athlete and you play football or basketball or hockey, and you're involved with, with uh, intense physical contact, Activities, well, at that point, you, you probably don't have the same problem that the average sedentary individual who works eight hours a day comes home and uh, has dinner and then goes to an hour class where he does kata and uh, very mild type of contact drills, goes home and you know, that's his life. He, he's, not, he's not getting the, the feeling and the, the emotional training that is necessary for him when he gets into an actual fight to be able to use his martial arts. Now, most of us sort of took the attitude that, yeah, well, that's what we, that's what we are, you know, that's as far as we can go. Uh, we, can, we can go this far in our training, and if you want to go further than that, you've got to go into a different kind of a sport or a different kind of an activity where there's a greater danger to you. And of course, the majority of people who are into traditional martial arts don't want to take that big step. So what I've been working on, on my own, and with a few of my virtual dojo students, is to train in a manner where we take the training method within the traditional martial arts and ratchet it up a couple of degrees so that we're still not mixed martial artists, we're still not going to go into the octagon, but we have a little bit different feeling for what the martial arts is capable of doing. And uh, I call it the, the training just full contact, soft hands, martial arts. And we take, we take that, that, that attitude into our training and we then mix that with the, the kata and the cooperative drills and we ratchet, ratchet everything up a couple of notches so that there is some contact made. Now, I'm going to explain first off what soft hands is. It's all it is is just a fist that is not clenched tightly into a solid weapon. You close your fist real tight and you hit something, you know, it's like hitting some, someone with a hammer. That's going to hurt. And that's, to, that's what people fear. And people fear hitting someone with that weapon because they hurt someone. This is not within the makeup of most of us. We don't, we're not here to you know, intentionally hurt someone. But if you keep your fist soft, semi-clenched, not open, you're not, you don't want to hit with your fingertips, but you want to hit with a soft hand, at that point, if you just get your own hand, you'll see that it's much different than a closed fist. So, we begin our training in soft hands, full contact, by sort of working with someone that you trust. And, and there has to be a mutual trust in order to make this work. Again, I'm not inferring or I'm not uh, predicting or, or having you anticipate that we're going to go into full contact fighting, but what was, what, as you envisioned it. All I'm saying is that we're going to make contact, and this is essential for people who have never been in a fight or never won a fight, 
or who have ne never been in a situation where they've had to utilize or use our martial arts. This is something that's never happened before. Because in the dojo, we're constantly pulling our techniques. And, and if you get into that mode, it's hard for you when you're in a stressful situation where you actually have to use it to actually finish that blow, to make that contact. And on the other hand, if you get hit, all of a sudden, this is the first time you've got ten struck of any kind, you know, whether in an intentional, mean kind of a manner, at that point, you're probably going to go down. It reminds me of, of policemen who have never been shot or never been in a, an actual fight, and they hear the sound of a revolver being pointed at them, and the bomb goes off, they think they're dead, and they fall down. It's a fall in the mind. It's what you, what you uh, predict. It's what you feel is going to happen. That's what's going to happen. So what we're trying to do here with this full contact soft hands mode of training is to get you to feel the impact, some impact. You know that if you get hit, you're not going to go down. It, this means you don't close your eyes when a fist comes at you. For some reason or other, closing your eyes doesn't make the hurt any less. All right? So this is what which was the intent of this kind of training. Don't be afraid to hit, and don't be afraid to get hit. All right? Now, Sensei Tim here and I are going to go through the first mode. All we do is we say, Tim, here's how hard I'm going to hit you. You tell me if this is too hard or not. And again, with soft hands. And you notice everything is a target. And it's the same with the kick. You know, if I'm going too hard, he's going to tell me. All right? Is that okay? Nothing there that's going to make you flinch or be afraid of the training. That is most important. The worst thing you can do in any kind of martial art training is to flinch or to be afraid of what's happening. The moment that happens, where you allow the fear to upset your ability to defend yourself, you're in serious trouble. So what we're trying to do here, rather than, uh, you know, most sparring, everybody's tight and they're, 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 they're already defeated. They see a hand come up to them and they're, they're defeated already. We're not being defeated. We're actually watching that blow, feeling that blow, and we're not afraid of it. That's the first step. So at this point, he then cranks me. At this point, and I'm not trying to block, I'm not trying to do anything, I'm just standing here at the moment. I say, okay, I'm good with that, that that's, that's fine. And you promise you're not going to hit me or kick me any harder than that, and I am not going to hit or kick him any harder than what I agreed to. At that point, we now have an agreement. Now the second, or the first level of this training, after we agree upon what soft hands, full contact, represents in our training. The next step is to trade blows. Moving around as though you were fighting and just allowing the blow to hit you. And you take turns. So Tim will throw a blow and I throw a blow. And what we try to do is to work on distancing, balance, mindset. So we keep that empty mind. We keep the uh, what I call tiger eyes. You're aware of what's happening. All right. Let's say before we start, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, you mentioned it in the past about um, speed. How fast should we be going? Should it be slower so that our intensity doesn't build when we're doing this? Or how would you? Because you have brought that up in the past. I wonder if you I have worked with Tim on uh, some of these elements before. Good point. You do, you're not going full speed, obviously. Full speed with soft hands is still going to hurt. And that, there again, it, you know, again, if someone wants to take full speed blows, they can accept that. But you notice when he was throwing the blows at me, they weren't full speed. If they were, I would have told them, hey, that's too fast, too hard. Huh? You know, you're going to poke an eye out or you're going you're to hurt me. I don't want to be hurt. I want to learn what it feels like to get hit. Feel a little bit of pain, but not, I don't want to be knocked out. So, in a sense, I answered it, but in a 
another sense, I want to clarify it, as Tim mentioned, not full speed, okay? It, but it, it will eventually speed up as we go along with the training. This is the first level. This is where you learn to accept, feel a little bit of contact with soft hands. You know it's not going to hurt you, you know you're going to survive, and therefore you're going to build confidence in being able to take those blows. And when you get through this first stage, we go to the second stage, which will be in the next stage. But meanwhile, let's say, Dan, go, you go first. And I go. And then move it around. Now here, when you're going to be doing no contact, this is where the distancing is off because I'm going to just don't go. I'm throw a punch and you notice this moment I'm not coming anywhere near him because I'm afraid of hitting him and because I'm going really fast so I don't want to hit him and that's where the problem with traditional martial arts where we uh, have this mindset I don't want to hit, he doesn't want to get hit. Alright, so now we've, we've broken through that barrier. Big, big advancement in martial arts. Okay, and I continue my turn. Now Tim start. You notice I go a lot to the head because we have never been hit in the head before. My instinct is right away is to is to use my elbows and to, to block out trying to get away from that. I want to be hit. I want to feel that little bit of pain. I want to feel the idea, the concept, how much time there is. As he's throwing that punch, look, the, the, the block of my ability to defend myself doesn't stop here. All right, it takes time for that fist to go here. So during this period of time, just a little bit of a movement here, I can deflect a lot of that blow. I'm not aware of that if it stops here. So that's, again, that next step. The blow stops here, and I realize, wow, I had a lot of time, I could have blocked that. And that's what we're trying to do. And again, distancing. As I'm moving, I can't hit him if I'm here. So I learned that if I'm going to throw that kick, I've got to be in the right position.